guys it's mr aj stack here and today i got a video of what's in my dock so here we have my macbook pro 13 inch dual core i7 and i'm just going to be showing you everything that's in my dock and this mac is running mac os x 10.7 so um hope you like this video and let's just get started so if we look down here at my dock we can see right here we have finder first which is uh, standard on any mac Right next to it, we have Launchpad. Again, it's standard on every Mac um, with Lion. These are automatically put here, so all these applications right here are put there just as is. So Launchpad, obviously, you got the applications. Next, we have Mission Control and um, basically the Expose. So if you didn't know that, these are Lion features. Um, if you have been living under a rock and really don't know what Lion is, um, but yeah, basically those are Lion features. Next we have the Mac App Store, which um, you should know of um, by now. It actually came in Mac OS X 10.6.6. Next we have Dashboard, which um, I don't really heavily use Dashboard. Um, just for the fact that it's not really that useful. I haven't found anything that really takes advantage of it. So it's just kind of uh, annoying and I don't use it very often. So if we go um, off to the next application, that is Mail. And I use Mail quite a lot. Um, it's always running. Whenever I start my computer, the first thing I open up is Safari and Mail. Just because I need Mail client running, so when I get new Mail, I know when Mail is up. And of course, Safari is my web browser. I do a lot of web um, browsing and a lot of social contact, I guess you could say. So I definitely need those. Going over to the next application, this is Firefox, and uh, Firefox is basically another web browser. I have several so that I can log into different U um, YouTube accounts, different uh, AdSense, Google accounts, stuff like that, and that's the same purpose with Google Chrome. I definitely would say that Firefox would be the fastest, Google Chrome being the slowest. I just prefer so Safari because it actually has the um, progress, um, so if we show you right here, it has the progress indicator where um, Firefox actually doesn't have a very good way to show progress and Google Chrome is just plain um, slow. It is absolutely the slowest uh, browser I've ever used on Mac OS X. Looking at the next application, this is FaceTime and uh, again this is very standard to your Mac OS X computer. You have FaceTime right there in the dock and um, I don't really use it that often just because I have an iPod Touch 4, iPhone 4, and an iPad 2 so it's not really necessary for it to ring all three devices at the same time it's just kind of annoying so I just keep that off for the most part unless I'm out somewhere and I only have my iPhone 4 and I want someone to call my uh, FaceTime email going over to the next application and that is address book you can see right here this is address book and again um, these applications are standard so uh, same thing with a calendar iCal and uh, standard, I don't really use iCal. I use Address Book to sync my uh, iPhone contacts right to my iPhone. But iCal just automatically syncs with my iPhone calendar. Going over to the next application, we have Xcode. Xcode is the developer tool, um, basically, so you can develop for iPhone, Mac, and uh, etc. So it's in Objective-C coding and along with Cocoa uh, interface. So uh, that's developer tool, and uh, that's basically used to make every application for iOS and Mac for the most part. Going over to the next application, we have Preview. Again, a standard application. A lot of these first beginning apps are standard, so um, I apologize for the boring part, but everyone wants to see exactly what's in my dock. Looking over at the next is iTunes. Again, standard, um, used to sync your iPhone and iPod Touch and iPad. Photo Booth, Take Pictures, standard application. iPhoto, standard iLife um, suite. It's always right there in the dock. I use it to organize my pictures, but I don't really go through it that often. Looking over here, we have iMovie. And I used to use iMovie a lot until I actually got Final Cut 10. And now I just use Final Cut 10 all the time. Although iMovie is very nice to simply edit just a um, put a few clips together and it's fast export time. GarageBand is also very fun. I haven't been using it lately just because I don't have the time to sit down and mess with my guitar and make drum beats but I do also use it on the iPad so and again that is a standard application for the iLife suite. 
looking over at the next application and that is ScreenFlow and that's what I'm using to record my desktop right now and this is uh, ScreenFlow 2.1 something like that the latest version and uh, it's a really great program I, obviously I can't show you right now because I'm using it to record but uh, definitely a worth it program and it runs really well it records in 1080p and um, yeah so not too much to say about it but a lot of simple editing along with a little bit of advanced editing and there's also a new version coming out. Looking over at the next application and that is Final Cut Pro. This is the new suite of it and um, I'll actually just open it up just so that you uh, know that it's the new one and um, it's pretty simple. Um, it's simpler than Final Cut 7 but I definitely like it over iMovie. So it's actually crashing. Um, for some reason, Final Cut 10 actually has this bug where I have, if I have my dual displays, it won't um, open unless I have my MacBook screen open. So I forgot about that when I started opening it. Next, we have Compressor, which I use to compress all the videos I export out of Final Cut 10. Um, basically, just drag your um, clip right into here drag 1080p or 720p and um, I'm all set. Motion is an application that um, will basically allow you to edit some clips and stuff like that. I really haven't gone much to use it just because see like it's effects for Final Cut and stuff like that. I haven't gotten a chance to use it because I'm not really um, I don't really spend too much of my time. I spend the um, time putting videos out for YouTube. So I haven't spent much, much time. I didn't pay for that. Um, and that goes along to a video that I need to do in my piracy video and what I think about it. So obviously if I don't use the application, I didn't pay for it. So yeah. yeah. So FileZilla is an FTP client and basically allows you to um, access simple FTP um, connections and also gives you this uh, kind of command uh, right here. It actually tells you everything it does and um, it's much faster than normal clients like Cyberduck and others like that. Next we have Photoshop which is very simple. Um, allows you to edit your photos. Everyone knows of Photoshop. Um, allows you edit your photos and this is the CS5. Along with Dreamweaver which is the HTML, CSS and um, standard web uh, code languages to edit. Um, this application is actually really good uh, because it allows a split view so you can actually um, see Let's just open up a random application, I mean not an application, an index. It allows you to see a live preview while you're editing the code. So I really like Dreamweaver. It's definitely a worth it application. Um, again, I did not pay for it just because the Adobe Suites are crazy priced and it's outrageous for me to pay as um, a kid. So um, definitely an awesome application. I use it probably daily just to m use all the websites. Uh, next we have Adobe After Effects, and I don't use After Effects that often just because um, After Effects, it's not really something I use. Um, I use it to make intros once in a while and open up source files, but not too much. I don't spend too much time in there, and that's the same thing with Motion. So going over to the next application, CyberDog, same thing as FileZilla. It's slower, but it supports um, SFTP and SSH uh, connections. Uh, talking about that piracy, uh, uTorrent. We have uTorrent, and basically allows you to download your peer-to-peer -peer torrents. And um, although um, torrents are not always linked to piracy, although mostly it is, um, that's kind of a tricky uh, subject. Just because peer-to-peer -peer is usually um, mischievous. The next application is Time Machine, and this is just a uh, shortcut to go into the uh, time machine to go back in time. Um, it's cool but it's kind of annoying. Uh, time machine I have some issues with sometimes. Uh, next we have Skype which I actually have open right now and I use it to uh, talk to people and stuff like that. System preferences is pretty standard and um, definitely um, application you're gonna have in your dock. Next one is Virtual DJ Pro and this application is very simple. Um, allows you to mix a few tracks and stuff like that. Um, I got this um, and it's pretty cool. So we can see right here um, I have this uh, crappy skin on but it allows you to put these um, these music in 
effects and stuff like that. So I use it to mess around and sometimes at work I use the uh, Mixtrack Pro and the Numark NS6. Uh, next we have Terminal, pretty standard. I use it to SSH sometimes and um, yeah. Next we have Call of Duty 4, uh, pretty standard. I think everyone knows what that is. It's just the simple game. We have Microsoft Word, PowerPoint, Excel, Outlook, Communicator, all these stuff. Um, I don't really use all this stuff. It's just there. Um, I haven't taken it out. I don't really care. Uh, next we have Smoltron. It's a simple PHP, HTML, uh, JavaScript, all that good stuff editor. So it'll read most code languages and uh, put it into uh, code lines. It's a pretty cool editor just for simple editing. We have iPhone Explorer, which allows um, SSH over USB. It's not actually SSH um, connection. It's just USB to um, the root of the device connection. Next, we have Red Snow. It allows me, um, this one's the version that's for iOS 5. and allows me to boot Tether. Team Viewer allows a remote um, desktop connection. Tiny Umbrella is SS, um, SH, SH Blob Grabber. It has recovery fixer and stuff like that. This DS Store Cleaner actually doesn't work online, but um, basically allows you to clean out the Mac OS X uh, DS Store. It's basically cache that's um, put in a file. So if I'm uploading something to a repo, I definitely don't want that DS Store to be cached in there. Next, we have Parallels Desktop, which I used for my virtual machine, and allows me to run Windows 7 64-bit in the uh, virtual state, so I can run Mac OS X and Windows at the same time. Frostwire, I think everyone knows what that is, but it's the alternative to LimeWire, and yes, uh, that goes along with my next video, um, Piracy. Uh, Twitter, we have Twitter, basically the Twitter client. I use it sometimes, but I prefer the web um, client. So here we have Spotify, and uh, Spotify, if you don't know, um, it allows free streaming of music, any song you really want. And Currently, it's on invite only, but they're allowing quite a bit of people. So it allows any streaming of any song, and um, if you pay the unlimited plan, you can stream any song and uh, listen to anything at any time. Next, we have Cam Twist. This allows for your live chats to be um, edited, stuff like that. It's really cool and um, allows for video effects for some things that don't allow it. And I'm not going to elaborate very much more because this is a long video. Uh, next, we just have applications, documents, downloads. Um, this is just a file that allows me to, um, it's my template for the uh, iOS 5 UDID, that's what I send in the email. And over here we have Windows 7 applications, and that is put there by default. And last but not least, trash. So guys, I hope you liked this video. It actually turned out to be much longer, and I have quite a bit of applications down here. But I hope you liked the video, and I hope it's as good as quality as always. And rate, comment, and subscribe, and check out iOSforlife.com.